Hey guys, how's it going? So today we are at our friend's house uh, doing another round of planting, but right at the same time that I'm gonna be working on planting all of these beautiful perennials. Okay, look at this. Look how gorgeous. The load of trees that we picked out at Jaker the other day, they are here. The trees are here and the equipment to plant them just showed up. So I wanna show you all those trees and where they're gonna be going. It's a very exciting day. So here's the tree pile. Look at these. There's the oaks. We picked out three oaks. We picked out three birches, I think, or no, six, six birches. <laughs> three Norway spruce right here. Aren't they gorgeous? There's the other oak. We had a lot of wind last night and these were delivered, I think, yesterday afternoon. So these are pin oaks. And then these are, can't remember what type of birch, but I can tell you in a second. Prairie dream birch trees. And then just to kind of refamiliarize yourself with the house here, you can see that they just mulched and oh my word, does it change the look in this area. Oh, it's so gorgeous. I'm gonna be focusing a lot of our plants in these little areas here. So this one right by their front doorway and then this one right here. I did bring three more incredible hydrangeas because we planted the three right up here that was in our first kind of planting phase. And I was able to find three more at Franz Witte that the same day we went and got the trees at Jaker. So we'll be popping those over here. So we have like a little bit of balance, just a little bit. Okay, I wanna get this truck unloaded so that we can show you all the beautiful things in here. Also, their daughter's graduation party is tomorrow. So it's kind of nice just to get a little bit of fluff, a little bit of color planted before that. And then just even having the mulch down makes everything look a million times more like tidy and finished. Oh, thank you. Yep. These are our placement. Our <laughs> Plant the tree where the sea seashell. What kind of shells are these? Abalone. Ab abalone. Abalone. Yeah. Those are pretty. They make, Anthony you know, got do dough for all of these. Really? Yeah. Wow. This is what they use for inlays on guitars. Really? Yeah, like on the fretboard or like if you see the sparkly stuff or the, oh. like the circle around the sound hole. It's abalone. Oh. There you go. Okay, we're going to go mark the spots for these trees. I think the three pin oaks are going in the back corner here. So this whole uh, perimeter is going to be a mixed border eventually. So maybe we do one right here. Let's see, like right in here. So they're roughly 24 feet apart from one another, which I think will be nice, especially if they stay on the shorter side or the more narrow side and if they get wider even better because it'll create a thicker block yeah yeah that looks really nice okay the norways are going they already planted some norways okay and they were talking about how they can't put them in the corner where the plan says because there's irrigation stuff so there. can we put them in this corner that would well, be awesome they were, they were asking if they could just continue some norways it's up to you if you think it would look good or to split them up and have them somewhere else it doesn't oh let's go look at them okay. look how nice all the plants look so good they've been taking such good care of them oh they did um knock the berms down oh did they yep look at that it was so windy when we planted out here oh this is so encouraging to see isn't it go oh. and yep they did knock the berms down quite a bit dang so that looks really good. There's the black lace elderberry, little tiny thing. Uh, but we will repeat one over here today. And then eventually we'll come back with a tree right here, a small ornamental tree. Okay, it looks like they've got Norway spruces right there. You see those against the back fence line? They're way more open than the ones we've got. Okay, well, I just looked up the stats on the Prairie Dream birch tree. They get 50 feet tall and 40 feet wide possibly. There are lines, so I have to make sure that we're far enough away from those. In the plant, it had three of them clustered together in this corner. And you know, oftentimes I plant three birches, like I buy them three trunks per container. Um, and usually when they're close together than that, they kind of adapt and don't grow quite as big. But I don't know, I think we might, We'll see. We might space these a little bit further apart. But they're a type of paper birch that mature, their trunks mature to that bright white, absolutely beautiful yellow fall color. 
Birches are just awesome trees all around. All right, guys, so we got all the tree placement figured out. Now the crew, we've got Andrew and Jose back here, and they're going to be taking the trees to the locations, getting the holes. They got an auger, so they're gonna dig the holes and actually plant the trees while I plant all the smaller things. Isn't that nice? I love it. So we'll try to do our best capturing what each one of us is doing out here in the garden. And then in the end, uh, I'll take you through and show you where everything ended up. Oh, hold up. Before we get started on planting, I just wanted to run through the plants quick. We've got Sweet Romance Lavender, which are bigger than any lavender I think I've ever put in the ground. These are like mature size right here, 12 to 18 inches tall and wide. They're awesome. We've got a double play doozy spirea, which I think I'm going to put in the back by the fine lines. And then we've got a little lime punch. So I brought both of these for the same spot. We're gonna set them down and see what we think. One of these will end up here, one of them won't. We've got orange smoothie daylilies right here, which are gonna go up in the same location that the lavender are in because the color contrast will be gorgeous. These are the spearmint hookera. These come back the best for me out of any hookera variety I've ever tried. In fact, these wintered over behind our barn and this is what they look like. Aren't they gorgeous? The blooms are about ready to open, so great time to get these in the flower bed. And then over here are the three Incredibles that we're gonna be putting up front, and then the other black lace elderberry. almost done but Aaron and I just took a little break and headed home for a minute to grab a couple more plants because there were a few spots I wanted to make sure we're done just kind of buttoned up before we left today one more little lime punch hydrangea to finish up the left side over here two more hookahs to add to what we've already put in and then I got some super tunia mini vista indigo to fill in the front of these little flower beds I think it's gonna be so pretty so let's get that done and then I'll walk you through everything
all done now guys and I'm so happy with how it turned out. I was really wanting to or hoping to have these two little front flower beds done by graduation party day and they are done and looking good. Okay, front view of the house, just ignore the pile of mulch. They're gonna be dealing with that tomorrow, but the flower beds just turned out beautiful. They're kind of mirrors of one another in terms of plant choice, but different shapes and a little bit different configuration. So in the center, there are Eastern redbud trees, which this one's breaking dormancy a little bit better than this one. We did not plant these. I think these were planted here last season. So they're probably just gonna give them a little more time and then we'll decide what to do with them. But down below, so the biggest plant in this area will be the little lime punch hydrangea right in here, which they don't get enormously tall. I wanna say three to four feet tall. So anyway, it'll just be a really nice kind of centerpiece without blocking the view to the house. That was kind of important uh, to me as I was kind of looking over the plant plan. Uh, we have some orange smoothie daylilies in here and these are enormous to start out with, which is so fun and such a nice bright color in this flower bed. And then sweet romance lavender. So there are four right here. In the beginning, I had them kind of in an arch around the front with the daylilies behind, but I decided to not go with such a hedge kind of look. I wanted to tuck them in behind rocks, make it look a little bit more natural, and really open it up to where you could still see some of the architecture of the rocks. So I think it ended up really nice. And it opened up space, which I wasn't planning on, but I'm glad it's here. A little bit of space for some color. So these are the Supertunia Mini Vista Indigos right here. There are five in this space, which will absolutely fill this up quickly. And then there are two right here to kind of cap that corner. Anyway, I think it looks really nice. You probably noticed that I did not use my auger today to dig holes, and that's because I was trying to make as little impact on their mulch job as possible. And I think we did pretty good job. I can see little specks of dirt kind of mixed in with the mulch right around where I planted, but for the most part, pretty clean. They'll need to take a broom or a blower to the edge there, but here's a view from the back, like toward the entrance of the property. So it looks good from all angles. There's that hydrangea right there. Oh, I just love it. And then the flower bed on this side, it's maybe a little bit bigger than half the size of the other one, but definitely smaller. So I used fewer plants, but the same, repeats of the same plants, which I think will give it a cohesiveness and it'll be really striking when things are all in bloom, like when those daylilies are in bloom. So again, an Eastern red bud here, just a tiny bit of growth at the top. I don't know. I, not holding out a tremendous amount of hope for that tree, uh, but these look really fun. So the hydrangea right there, the two daylilies, four lavender, and then the supertunia mini vista indigo. Really beautiful. Okay, we're gonna move straight over to this area. We've got the spearmint hookahs right here. And I think that these will do really well. There are seven of them total. So we started it off with five and then we went home and I picked up two more. And I think that looks really nice. And the great thing about these is that they can take sun or shade, which you can see that's what they're gonna get. Some of them are gonna be in the shade longer in the day than others. Uh, so they should do real well. And I think they bring a nice pop of color with their blooms there. And then right up here, the repeat of the incredible hydrangeas. So we've got the three on that side. And now there are three on this side, slightly different configuration, but once they put on some size and have blooms, it'll be nice to have some of the same interest on both sides. Moving this direction, you can see kind of how they're lined up there. There is a slight berm on this side as well as on the other side. Things are looking good. Oh, next plant is the black lace elderberry, which is around this side. Oh my goodness, with the black mulch, you can barely see it <laughs> right here. So black lace elderberry here, the other one's right there. We'll have an ornamental tree of some kind in here, but you guys, these get enormous. In our area, they can get like 10 to 12 feet tall and wide. This is a perfect flower bed for them because I mean, they have all the space they need to grow however big they want. They like full sun, they do well in our high pH. I just thought they would be a really fun one to have on this corner of the house. And last one over there. Boy, this area right here looks wildly different with mulch. It's awesome. So this is where we planted all the fine line buckthorns, the uh, Italian ice roses right here. And then today we popped this double play doozy spirea in because this one gets about three by three, which I thought would be a kind of a really nice size right in here. These stay a little bit shorter, so we'll have something a little bigger and then a step down in size right there. And I like the fact that it's got some red in its leaves. I think that'll be a nice kind of contrast to what the other things in this bed. And when they bloom, they're kind of like a purpley red 
really pretty and striking and they're seedless. They don't take over. They typically bloom sometimes starting in late spring all the way through fall and they are a zone three through eight. Pretty tough little plant. Love the color of the leaves. And I do want to show you, before we go look at the trees, I want to show you this corner over here because boy, without the mulch, do you guys remember what it looked like? Our soil is so light colored that especially in sunny spots, it can look really dry and really hot, but with the addition of mulch, it looks so much better. So we've got the three rows of Sharon's in this corner here, uh, and then we'll be adding some more things later on, but it just looks so good. Okay, now we're gonna head back around and I will show you where the trees ended up. First three are right over here. Oh, those look so good. Those are the pin oaks right there. They are huge gorgeous, just starting to leaf out. I think they're gonna do really well in this spot and they're gonna get big enough. We needed to have things in this corner that got big and we will be adding some ever, like tons of evergreens, lots of big shrubs. Eventually this will be fairly blocked off. I mean, it's kind of a shame to block off view, but at the same time, the wind can be pretty fierce and it usually comes from this direction. So anyway, I think this is a really great start. And then we've got the Norway spruces. Okay, so oaks are right down in that corner. Here are the three Norways. I think they're gonna make a beautiful screen right here. Really beautiful trees. These are like the three we bought. We bought three of these exact same trees, Norway spruces early on this spring and I just think they're wonderful. And you can kind of see the future contouring of the beds. You know, everything evolves a little bit and this is just a start. So it'll be fun to see how these fill in. Okay, so that's the last Norway. Next trees are the birch trees in the corner. Oh yeah, those are going to be gorgeous. Well, they already are, but oh, I can just imagine when they're nice and big. Oh, it's so pretty. And they already, because they're old enough, they're not so young that they're not showing some of their white bark color. Of course, you need to take all of this stuff off, but you can see the beautiful interest these have. Just love them. Again, these are the prairie dream birch, paper birch. Last three birch, I think he's just finishing up in that area, right in this corner. Oh yeah, they look great. They look really good, yes. Oh, beautiful job. Those are going to be spectacular. So these are the same prairie dream as in the other corner. Yeah, I think they're gonna really like these. And then down this line, there are three more Norway spruces that they've already planted along this side. And that is gonna be it for today's project, you guys. A lot of stuff got done. How nice was it to have a crew here planting those trees? Let me tell you, it was so nice because usually I'm a little bit more involved in those kinds of uh, projects, but those trees are big and they are heavy. Um, and, I mean, when it takes a skid steer to move them around in the garden, then you know how heavy those root balls are. So I'm so thankful for the crew that was here installing those. So they were busy doing that while I was busy in the flower beds. I'm so happy to have those two front flower beds done. Those were the most important ones, like all spring. I wanted to start with those earlier. Glad I held off because I was able to get my hands on some big perennials. So instant impact, but I know how it feels when you're working toward kind of that uh, event date. You know, the graduation party being this weekend. Uh, I know if it was my graduation party or my kids graduation party, I would want the front of my house to look welcoming and pretty and tidy. And I think that having those flower beds done, that just kind of makes me feel like, oh, we did our part. We got it done. Check that one off. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I think the next project we'll be doing in this space is probably planting a whole bunch of smaller evergreens. This is kind of a busy road. Sorry. We've got a bunch of spring grove arborvitas we're going to be bringing back here fairly soon to plant along the border. So we will bring you along for that. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.